Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Things are moving fast, but think back, if you still can, to 10 years, 10 years ago. What were Democrats saying about abortion at that time, a decade ago? Well, they said they believed in Roe versus Wade. They said that abortion was never preferable, but it ought to be legal for the first trimester of pregnancy. They were not, they often told us, pro-abortion. They were pro-choice. And a lot of voters, by the way, agreed with them. You might not like it, but according to the polls, that was a mainstream position. But that's not where Democratic leaders are today. The party's new position is the more abortion, the better. Abortion must be available for any reason at all up until the moment of birth. As an op-ed in the New York Times this morning put it, quote, pregnancy kills, abortion save lives. In other words, it's better to abort a pregnancy than to bring it to term. That's their view. How many voters agree with that? Almost none. Most people find it disgusting, just as most people, according to polls, don't think taxpayers ought to be forced to pay for abortion. The Democrats running for president don't care what the polls say. They're for it. Will you commit to abolishing the Hyde Amendment, which hurts poor women and, and yes. women of color? Voting, yes, and by the way, ACLU member, I got a near perfect voting record my entire career. I heard right. you did, but I'm glad you just said you would commit to abolishing no, no. the Hyde Amendment. Right now, it, 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 it has to be, it can't stay. I will work to um, overturn the Hyde Amendment, which makes it impossible for low-income women to get access to reproductive care, including abortion services. We have work to do until we get rid of the Hyde Amendment once and for all. The Hyde Amendment. For more than 40 years, the Hyde Amendment has protected people of faith from being forced to pay for what they think is killing. Certainly, Pete Buttigieg would understand that as a man of God. But a judge has spent the last few months accentuating his personal holiness. Just the other day, he told us that the Lord strongly prefers him to Mike Pence. So where is St. Pete of South Bend on the question of abortion? Well, he's strongly for it. His position is that any restriction at all, for any reason at all, is unacceptable. Most Americans believe that it should be up to the woman to make that choice. So by pursuing a radical, extreme agenda on these social issues, I think Republicans are doing the same thing that they've done when they've uh, resisted a, a popular agenda on things like living wages or health care. It's just one more example of the extremism of the modern Republican Party. So you want fewer abortions? According to holy man Pete Buttigieg, that makes you crazy and possibly dangerous, certainly an extremist. Notice that Buttigieg has no problem at all with Senator Maisie Hirono of Hawaii. Just yesterday, Hirono ghoulishly bragged about brainwashing middle schoolers to support abortion. Watch. From a public school in Hawaii, and I told them I was coming to a rally in front of the Supreme Court, and they said, "Why?" And I said, "It's because we are <laughs> we have to fight for abortion rights," and they knew all about it. And I asked the girls in that group of eighth graders, "How many of you girls think that government should be telling us women when and if we want to have babies?" Not a single one of them raised their hands. Imagine saying something like that to someone else's kids. Senator Cory Booker can easily imagine it. Like Maisie Hirono, Booker has no children of his own, but he is fervently committed to abortion. So committed to it that if elected, Cory Booker has promised to create something called the White House Office of Reproductive Freedom. The only point of the office would be to ensure that we have enough abortions in this country. Cory, Book Cory Booker believes that abortions are a vital strategic resource like oil or uranium. It would be interesting to know why Cory Booker believes that. Like most of the Democratic candidates, he refuses to come on this show, so we can't ask him directly. But we'd love to know what he makes, for example, of the abortion rate in black America. African-American women are five times as likely to get abortions as white women in the United States. What does Cory Booker think of that? Is it something to celebrate? Should we be fighting to get the abortion rate even higher? What about sex-selective abortions? 
they're common. Are they morally okay? Would it be all right to abort a pregnancy if you thought the child was going to grow up to be gay or short or prematurely bald? Thanks to genetic testing, those may soon be real questions. Is there any abortion under any circumstances that's ever bad or even a little bad? Or are they all morally neutral, no matter what the cause or stage of pregnancy? Those are the most basic questions about abortion. Nobody on the other channel ever asks them. That's a shame. The answers would be fascinating.